Hello and welcome to more World War II 172 scale. Uh, we're going to look at uh, one of my main collections of mortar type tank destroyers of the Germans for World War II. Uh, we've got a few different types here. I've done a few short videos on uh, some of these types and then I have some others that are like this but are the, for their winter or for desert so they're not here. And there's also a whole bunch of other martyrs that were based on French tank chassis that were used for 21st Panzer Division. I've done a quick video of showing the 21st Panzer in its case. And in the future, I'm going to take those some of those out and do more detailed looks. Uh, let's take an overview and then we'll take a closer look. Uh, a lot of these tanks are built on the 38T chassis. You recognize... Uh, that types of wheels, the large wheels, which is from the Hetzer. Uh, these are called, mainly, these are called Panzer Martyr 3s, and these are the 3H with this style. And then uh, the last Martyr made was the 3M, where it's the, the same type of chassis, but instead of having it this in the in the middle and then open back they made it more enclosed they move where the engine is and then move the whole encasement to the back so look at see how it doesn't overhang these all still have the 75 millimeter pack except for that which is slightly different which i'll get to in a, a moment uh let's look at these and then uh those are Martyr 2s. They're based on the PZ-2 chassis. This one, I believe, is still called a Martyr 3, and I forget what chassis that's on. It's got a whole different wheelbase. And then you can see this is uh, has the, the basic 38T wheelbase, but a completely different design, more open. And this has... A longer barreled, they had captured, Germans had captured a lot of 76 millimeter Russian guns. So this has uh, been rebored so it can take their 75 millimeter ammunition. But you can see it's slightly longer barrel, so it had slightly better penetration. Now we'll look at these. Uh, most of these are all models that I built. And most of them are made out of plastic, except when, with some exceptions, which I'll get to. These were mainly Eschi and Italeri. You can see the paint job on this one, the sand with the green. This one, it's kind of wearing off now, but I put uh, foliage type that you get from uh, Woodland Scenics. This was an early effort, so I only had certain types of paint, and the green came out kind of funny. But I still liked it. It's got a cool uh, badges that they had for tank destroyer units. Yeah, so it's almost like a shamrock on that. I, I didn't have all full crews, and a lot of them, they didn't give you that. So I don't have them all on that, so I had to do the best they could at the time. There's a commander, and guy got a shell, and then a soldier in there with it with the shell uh, cool these three are older uh, eshi which italeri bought out and they're missing a couple of parts and then of course tracks and they just got as far as uh the basic gray put down as like a primer, and someday I've got to uh, get replacement tracks um, for this to fit on there and then camouflage them and decal and hopefully ever get a crew if I ever get around to it. So that's the, that's the 3H, that's one of the standard ones, started using those 1943 to the end of the war till they were used up. These were came out in 1944 to the end of the war. There's a paint job on this one. This, I believe, was an um kit, which uh, 
had tracks that uh, you put on link by link, and it was an early effort of me, uh, and so it didn't come out too well. The other ones had basically, uh, you know, the rubber band type tracks. This one is a die cast, ready-made by, uh, I believe, Forces of Valor. Very cool. This one's a die cast, might be Altaya. And this one is a metal model. It's, I don't remember the name, but they usually come from England in a little bag with hardly any instructions. And uh, you can see it's a little bit smaller in scale. As I think some of their stuff was closer to 20 millimeter, which is closer to 176 and 172. These were uh, resin kits. You can see they're a little bit smaller than that one. Very cool. Got those two to go together. This, I think, was uh, either an um kit. Let's see, it's getting loose there. The shield, the um kit. Or it might have been a little airy. I forget now. It's been about 10 years since I did some of these. Very cool. This one has a big box. It's a famous picture of uh, this type of Martyr II. This big box. Uh, this one's cool. This one's heavy metal model. And see, it's got... I forget what the deal is. That was an odd, uh, like a prototype uh, system that they have for wheels for some other day vehicle. But they used it and made a, some of these. A lot of these martyrs only had a uh, hundred or so. And then some of the other ones had a few hundred each. So all total, there was like about 1,500 different martyrs. This one's a ready-made one. I believe this might have been Hobby Lobby. It's got metal, very nice. And then these were, uh, the Chinese somehow got a hold of, when they made these for the companies, then they made a cheaper version in just more plastic with just a little bit of metal. So you see this has sort of a little bit of a shine to it. And I have three of those thinking that someday I was going to repaint those and set those up. So that's a look at some cool martyrs. Those are the anti-tank pack gun 75. So that's good for taking on just about anything uh, that the Allies could throw on it. And it was more than good enough for fighting Shermans and T-34s head on from a distance. And it's in a mobile tank chassis, you know, unlike the, any tank gun that had to be moved and hauled by something, so it was more effective, but it's got very thin armor, so I didn't want to tank uh, attack head-on, but when I play a war game, it kind of works out that way, so they're very thin, so these would have like a minus one on defense, where a regular tank could be zero, or if it's thicker armor, plus one, so it has a drawback, but they're open top, so that it was easier for them to move around and load. So sometimes these get a, an advantage and they can fire twice in one turn. So they have their advantages and disadvantages. And then I've seen shown those before the a lot of the homemade village buildings that I made. All right, that's Martyrs. Main part of the collection, more Martyrs to come. Until next time, thanks for liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. Lots more World War II 172 scale uh, for Germans, Americans, Russians, and British, and a little bit else too, and terrain, and a lot of fun stuff. Thank you.